I want to try and explain the topic of gum disease and try to differentiate for you the difference between gum recession and gum disease. A lot of young people today have gum recession and I think that is particularly because of all the whitening, the peroxide, the use of baking soda that people have heard is good for your teeth. And the trouble is the gum will shrink down and it's supposed to join your tooth at the level where the enamel of your tooth turns into the root of your tooth. But if this gum recedes down, it can open up a part that isn't covered by enamel and that can be extremely sensitive. And that is where you would have gum recession, when the gum here recedes down and exposes sometimes several millimeters of tooth surface, which is not covered in enamel. That is the problem with gum recession. And I have another video about how you regrow those gums. If you can do it quickly, you have great success. If you've had them there for a long time and you're tooth, the root of your tooth at that junction has eroded, it becomes very difficult. Normally, and let's talk about this side of the tooth in health, normally the gum, which is here, this is my representation of your gum tissue, this gum attaches to the tooth right at the junction where the enamel ends, the tooth begins, the gum, the last part of the gum that you can see, obviously it dips down under, under the surface, and the junction between, the, the gum doesn't attach to the tooth, the gum is attached to the tooth by a whole multitude of really tiny fibers, little tiny hairs, a hundredth the width of the hair of your head and these little fibers attach the inner surface of the gum to the, the wall, to the root of your tooth. So this gum tissue is not directly attached to your root of your tooth but the tooth is literally attached to the gum in a kind of Velcro way. It, it, imagine Velcro because it's very like that. And when it pulls away from your tooth, providing you get to it quickly and massage it and clean it and get rid of all the problems around, which we're going to talk about, the little hairs will regrow and your tooth will literally Velcro back up from the bottom of the pocket or the gap to wherever these little hairs are broken up to the top again. That's how you reattach the, peri the periodontal uh, fibers that get broken or get destroyed by bacteria. So that's a tooth in health. When the gum gets irritated by a mass of bacteria, and the mass of bacteria is something that is very complicated today because it's called plaque. Not everybody has plaque. And that is a differentiation that occurred in 2014. In 2014, we discovered that healthy mouths had healthy bacteria floating around in the saliva fluids. These are called planktonic bacteria. And they are all different kinds. And the more kinds you have, pretty much, the better off you will be. There are hundreds and hundreds. There are almost a thousand. Maybe there are a thousand. We only know of about 900 kinds of these planktonic bacteria that float around in your saliva. They will be changed as you eat and drink. You're going to swallow some. They are changed by the, the chemistry of the foods we eat. The planktonic bacteria are, are very delicate because they just float around as individuals. They have no real organization. They just happen to be there. And some of them land on your tooth, and on your tooth they collect friends and neighbors, and they weave together with some proteins from your saliva, and they make 
a film, almost a saran wrap type of film that is, is made up of bacteria and proteins. And it's a very healthy, protective covering that covers everywhere. The skin of your mouth, your teeth, your tongue, down your throat, up your nose, it's everywhere. And this film is called biofilm. Within biofilm are many, many bacteria. And they vary from tooth to tooth and they vary all over the mouth. So I'm not here to talk about biofilm, but I am here to tell you that when that biofilm gets infected, if it's not healthy, it gets infected potentially by a bacterium called Streptococcus mutans. And these bacteria, strep mutans, are the ringleaders. They are the bad guys of the bad group. And they attract other bad guys that they hang out with. And basically, they layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of themselves. And they form this mass that loves to stick on the outside of your teeth. And it loves to stick in places where you don't clean your teeth so well. This is why it all began, the whole concept of flossing and brushing and so forth, to get rid of plaque. And you can do some, to some degree, you can get rid temporarily of plaque bacteria by brushing and flossing and going for dental cleaning. But the problem is that you don't get rid of them completely. And as soon as your tooth is clean, if you have strep mutans and if you have the environment they like hanging out in your mouth, they will regrow again. And this is a continuous process. This is why I prefer to get rid of strep mutans progressively with a regular use of small amounts of xylitol at the end of meals. You eat the xylitol at the end of meals, it feeds all the bacteria, good and bad, in your mouth. And it's so interesting because the bad bacteria can't process xylitol, so they disappear. And the good bacteria take their place when they're missing. They take their place over the teeth in this biofilm. And with their good guy friends, they protect your teeth from reinfection by strep mutans. Even if these strep mutans hang out in your saliva, they're not going to let them infect your teeth. That's why xylitol is so cool, and you want to give it time after you've had the xylitol to feed these good bacteria, to develop this healthy biofilm, to get rid of the plaque bacteria. It's such a wonderful concept. But assuming now you have not done your tooth cleaning and you're not eating xylitol either enough or properly, then you can develop these plaque deposits that build up in these places on your teeth where there's sort of a backwater, a place that they don't get moved very often. And because they're here, right at this place where the tooth and the gum and these little hairs, and it's just a, an incredibly difficult place because when plaque accumulates here, it causes irritation, inflammation to the gum. And you get the gum gets puffy, and swollen and irritated and starts to bleed. That is the thing that we call gingivitis. It is the irritation of the gum by the plaque at this place. And the reason that this is so dangerous is that this irritation can break these little fibers. It can pull or allow the gum to pull away from your tooth and open up what we call a pocket. And this is the diagram over here. This is where the tooth and the gum have separated. They have lost the fibers that once upon a time connected the gum tightly, imperceptibly, to the tooth. Now we have a gap. Now, all the bacteria in the mouth aren't just landing on the surface of your tooth that's protected by biofilm. They are now able to go into this, uh, this backwater, into this pocket between 
the gum. I hope you can understand my diagram. Here is this gum tissue as it used to be, but now it's not attached tightly to the tooth anywhere, not even below where the enamel is. It's all opened up. It literally is like a pocket. And in that pocket go all the bacteria from your mouth because the liquids of your mouth go into that pocket. It's big enough to allow that to happen. And the problem is within, not only are there plaque bacteria that may get in there, and that's not particularly good, you'll get that subgingival calculus forming. You've probably been told you have stuff under the gum and your dentist wants to clean under the gums. That's what's happening. Instead of having that cleaning straight away, my suggestion would be to use my complete mouth care system because the xylitol in your saliva will travel down there. It will inactivate those plaque bacteria just like it would in the mouth. It will stop plaque forming. And the other products of my complete mouth care system can dissolve that subgingival plaque very gently. And there's a good chance if you do this for three to six months and go back, that subgingival plaque and all that problem may well have gone away. And it is a kind of miracle because we don't understand, most people don't understand how this occurs. And they think because it's under the gum, they have to have a professional clean it away. Well, it's under the gum, but it's in this pocket. And your saliva and the liquids, if you rinse with liquids, that I recommend, specifically the ones I recommend, they do an incredible job of cleaning up this pocket and allowing it to heal, to heal back up again. But the problem of gum disease, this is the first stage of gum disease, the opening of the pocket. The second stage of gum disease is the bacteria that are in saliva, especially the bacteria that are there are 11 kinds of bacteria that float around in our saliva. They are transmissible from other people. So if you have interacted with a lot of other people who have gum disease, and gum disease is very prevalent in, for example, elderly population. If you are a worker in an assisted living facility or your mom is going into an assisted living facility, one of the risks of this community living where people generally have very bad oral health is that it is easy for it to be transmitted and for you to get an infection if you have these pockets around your teeth where the bacteria that you don't want, one of these 11 kinds that we really don't want, these periodontal pathogens they are called, and when they get into this pocket, they set up the worst kind of problems. These periodontal pathogens are called opportunistic bacteria. They are just waiting for the opportunity to get into this opening, into this pocket. These opportunistic bacteria want nothing more than to find themselves a dark, low oxygen space where nobody's going to bother them. So they can multiply, they produce these poisons, they produce things that erode the gum, they make ulceration, they get in to through the gum, they create inflammation in that pocket, they create inflammation and break more hairs that connect the gum to the tooth, they get into your bloodstream, and they can even go around your body in the bloodstream and when they get into your bloodstream they are not far from the carotid artery they are not far from the veins that go into your into your head and into your neck and that very vascular area with these pathogens running around running wild within your body they can affect your heart they can affect your brain they can cause a risk of a higher your risk of a stroke they can cause pre more risk of preterm birth these are nasty, nasty pathogens, which we do not want in our body. And there is no defense system in this part of the gum tissue. Our defense system 
is pr provided by nature all over the skin of our mouth, all over our teeth. But once you have this breach, you have this problem of no defense and this chronic inflammation and these nasty opportunistic periodontal pathogens. And that does sound terrible, and it is terrible. And, and you, the thing to know is that at this point, at this moment, when you had the plaque against your tooth, if you saw that bleeding, if you saw that swelling, and you brushed and got rid of the plaque with xylitol and my complete mouth care system, probably in a week, this would go away. If you massaged your gums with a clean toothbrush, the way I recommend on all my other videos, this is what it's all about, preventing this. Gingivitis can be cured in two days. Just brush and use the products that I recommend. Get hold of some xylitol and you will prevent this plaque from reforming. You will instead form protective biofilm. This is the message of oral health in one video. If you don't do that and you're already at this stage, don't give up. Do the same things. Take six months. Really pay attention to what you're doing twice a day, clean your teeth, massage your gums, and you can get rid of, with the products in my complete mouth care system, we have measured the numbers of these harmful periodontal pathogens. And if you're a healthy person, if you have a strong immune system, if you sleep and exercise and eat well, if you have these pockets, they will usually heal within 12 weeks. Uh, it, for somebody, unfortunately, who is diabetic, who has chronic uh, problems, maybe you have autoimmune problems or you have digestive issues, it will take you longer. It may take you a couple of years and it may take you some professional help at the same time from your dentist, but you can recover using my complete mouth care system and potentially having some additional help. Because what dentists can do for you is they can lighten the burden, they can clean away those periodontal pathogens, get rid of them for you. But the trouble is, if you haven't used my complete mouth care system and xylitol and cleaned up the mess that's in your mouth, these other floating around planktonic bad bacteria, everything's just going to reoccur again. So my advice to you is to use my strategies prior to going to the dentist. So make your appointment for 12 weeks, three months, three to six months out and go and see, go and get some measurements. See if these pockets that were perhaps at one point, these pockets were five, 10, eight, different millimeters for different people, different places, different ways of measuring. I can't tell you what a really bad pocket is. I believe you shouldn't have a pocket. I believe you can have a place where there's no pocketing. I have zeros and ones. I don't, if I had a three, a pocket that was a three or a pocket that was a four, I'd be using my camera, I use it anyway, but I would be extra careful with the way I brush my teeth, the way I clean my toothbrush, and the products that I use. So this is the story of periodontal disease, gum disease, stage one, and then these other various stages numbered for how bad it is. It's all bad. The minute you have a pocket, get rid of it. Otherwise, you're setting yourself up for disaster.